In this question, which other point P represents a complex number Z on an arc and diagram where the modulus of Z minus I is equal to 2? Which of the locus of P as Z varies is the curve C? In part A, we need to find a Cartesian equation of C. This is going to give us a circle centered 0, 1 radius of 2. So in Cartesian form, x squared plus y minus 1 all squared is equal to r squared. The radius squared, 2 squared, is going to give us 4. In part B, we need to sketch the curve. So let's grab up some axes and we'll place our circle on them. So what we'll have is the following. Give or take, it's going to look something like so. Okay, that's not hugely accurate, but it should give you some rough idea. So this is going to be a circle. We're going to have center 0, 1 and radius of 2. So here we go, 0, 1. This point right here is going to be 0, 3. Okay, that one will be 0, minus 1. We're now told a transformation t from the z plane to the w plane is given by w is equal to z plus i over 3 plus i z. Z cannot be equal to 3i. The point Q is mapped by T onto the point R. Given that R lies on the real axis, in part C we need to show that Q lies on C. OK, it says given that R lies on the real axis. Let's just express W in terms of U and V. W is equal to U plus IV. If this now, this point R, is on the real axis, V will have to be equal to 0. What I'm going to do is focus on the fraction right here and realise the denominator. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to write W is equal to, and I'm going to express Z as X plus IY. So we're going to have X plus IY plus I. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 3 plus I multiplied by Z, which is going to give us our X plus IY. So just tidying this up and writing now the real and imaginary terms or components together, what we're going to have is X plus I y plus 1 in the numerator, then in the denominator, what we're going to have then is i multiplied by i y. i times by i is going to give us now minus 1, so we're going to have 3 minus y, and then we're going to have plus i x. I'm now going to realise the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the complex conjugate of 3 minus y plus i x. So w I'm going to write as u plus i v. And that's going to be equal to, now, the quantity x plus i. And then we're going to have the y plus 1. And we're going to be multiplying this by the complex conjugate, which is going to be the quantity 3 minus y minus i x. And then in the denominator, we're going to have, now, 3 minus y plus i x. And we're going to be multiplying this, now, by 3 minus y minus the i x. OK. So let's just expand that top out. So we've got u plus iv. And what we're going to have then, first terms, we're going to have x now, and that's going to be multiplied by 3 minus y. Then outer terms, that's going to give me minus i x squared. Inner terms, we're going to get plus i, and then we're going to get y plus 1 multiplied by 3 minus y. And then last terms, we're going to end up with i times by i, which is going to give us minus 1. So this is going to give us plus x multiplied now by y plus 1. So all I've done is simply expanded that top out. In the denominator now, when we multiply these two, we're simply going to get 3 minus y all squared plus x squared. We want to now consider the imaginary parts. We know that v is equal to 0. So what we can say then is the following. We can say 0 is equal to, and you might want to just make a note of that, v is equal to 0. So let's look at the imaginary parts now. So let's write this here. What we can say then is the following. We're going to have minus x squared. Then what we're going to have is this right here. And I'm just going to expand this out. We're going to have plus 3y minus y squared. Then we're going to have plus 3 and then we're going to have minus y. OK, these are the imaginary terms. They're equal to 0. So in the denominator, we've got 3 minus y squared plus x squared. Quite clearly, the numerator must be equal to 0. So rearranging, I can now say x squared, and then I'm going to have plus y squared. And what I've got here is plus 3y minus y. So that's going to give me now uh, plus 2y, so that's going to end up being minus 2y, and then we're going to have now minus 3, and that's equal to 0. So completing the square on this, we're going to have x squared plus y minus 1, all squared minus the 1 minus the 3 is equal to 0. 
x squared plus y minus 1 all squared add in the constants to the other side so quite clearly we can see that this is exactly where we started with the curve c so if we go back up to our cartesian equation x squared plus y minus 1 all squared is equal to 4 by simply realizing the denominator setting the imaginary parts to zero rearranging solving and putting it back into this cartesian form so that's all done. We've fulfilled what they wanted us to do. We need to show that Q lies on C by putting it like so as x squared plus y minus 1 all squared is equal to 4.